So what we have here is that 7750 Valjour uh, watch. Uh, it's a tag, tag hooer watch. And the problem was that uh, the small hand on the top, as you can see, was um, not, it was not staying in the right position. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is that the chrono button, when you hit the chrono button and the chrono hand turns, that small hand on the top, uh, can I show you that hand? Let me think if I can show you that hand. Let me set a tweezers here and I can actually, this is live, so I thought this was live. Anyway, I can actually point to that hand uh, if this was live. <laughs> And now it's live. Let's stop the solution. It's a little OBS problem with my camera. So, so here we have the hand on the top, I believe, right there. So that's the hand right there. It's been reset. Um, and this video will show you what I did to reset this hand. So what was happening is when I was hitting the chrono button on this watch, uh, this button was the, was the activate chrono button. Uh, I got the camera probably too close to everything, but this button here was the activate chrono button move this up a bit right here and you press that in and then the chrono hand that's right here moves around and then this this uh, button on the top actually is for the uh, or the, the hand on the top the hand on the top is actually for the uh, reset the 30 second hand on the top now the problem I have is that is that this watch is still running and this hand decided to come around here and block the hand that I'm trying to show you right there that's where the hand is so I had to fix that uh, for my friend Bill uh, as I did the watch and when I hit the reset button on the chrono which is this button over here the the hand snapped back and moved it just moved way too easily um, and when you hit the reset button on a chronograph always hit it when the chrono count the second hand here for the chrono count is between the 10 o'clock position and the 2 o'clock position. So you stop the chronograph between those two positions. Um, or if you're do actually using the chronograph to measure time, uh, you can stop it anywhere, but then let it go again until it gets either to the 10 o'clock or the 2 o'clock position. Uh, a lot of watchmakers will tell you that because when you hit the cam and there's a heart cam on that, on the bottom here, when I click that button here, that'll swing that hand all the way back It'll swing the second counter from down here all the way back. And that's a lot of force to put on that pivot and to keep that hand from sliding sideways. So it's very difficult for that hand to say, I'm gonna stay on without any problem. So, so that's the recommendation. Um, and so for this one here, I'll show you what I did to make sure that that stays in place. Uh, the other thing I wanna ask you, and please answer me if, you're, if you subscribe, um, I do a lot of pocket watches. Um, do you want me to do live? Like once a week, should I do a one hour live YouTube video where you guys can ask me questions and I can answer them uh, live? Because I'm, I'm thinking I want to do that um, only because it gives you the opportunity to ask questions that, uh, that you might have texted to me or put in comments actually on the YouTube. And, and um, you really can't give you the, the best answer possible by doing it that way. So. And you can ask me any questions from tools to lathe work to to uh, regulating a watch to what cameras do I use for doing these videos to which book in the back here is the best one. I think I made a video on that. I got my Michael Jackson glove on here. Beat it. Just beat it. Um, to anything. And if you want to show me, if I, you want me to show you how to do a bottom deal on a card deck, I can show you how to do a bottom deal. Uh, it's no deal for me to show you how to bottom deal. It's just going to take you 10,000 tries to get it right. So, so I'd like to do that. Um, I'd like to do that for everyone who's subscribed. Um, I almost have 7,000 subscribers on my channel, which is amazing for watch work. I know there's guys out there uh, that have many more uh, s subscribers, like uh, Wrist Watch Revival uh, is a big site out there. He's got tons of stuff. Um, and he does watches mainly. He does some pocket watches, and and I think he probably does a better production of videos than I do. But I still work, so I don't have time to spend with all the camera angles and the and the production value. Uh, later in the future, I'll I'll try to do that. But for now, no. So if you would like me to do a um, a vlog or a live YouTube live uh, once a week, 
I could probably do that on Sunday nights uh, and probably Sunday nights between 5 and 6 or between 4 and 6 or somewhere in there, right? So I think it's a good time to do it. Um, so just let me know. Drop me a, drop me a note on there. Uh, I promise to wear gloves from now on when I'm working on watches because I did a little comments from people saying, JD, put your gloves on. Don't forget to put your gloves on. So I got the gloves on today. Um, and it's very hard to use screwdrivers with gloves on. I'm telling you that right now. So even Mark, uh, who's a supreme watchmaker, he, he's a British guy, but he works out of Thailand, I think. Uh, I bought his instructional videos years ago. Um, I bought his how to repair a chronograph vi uh, video, series of videos. That's about 120 bucks. It's worth it because it goes through all the theory of chronographs and the different types. And it has the 7750 Valjour uh, tear down and build up again and all of the oiling that's required. So I bought that specifically to, to make sure I could take this apart and put it back together again and oil it properly. There, I did a friend of mine, Jim's, I'm not going to do last names, but I did Jim's father's 7750 uh, chronograph years ago, probably 12 years ago maybe, and I bought the, or downloaded the, the service manual for it, and it was so hard to figure out because you couldn't see anybody doing that work. You couldn't see how they hold the springs back um, or how they uh, actually oil various cams and various sides of, of the watch. And I know in a lot of my videos lately I've mentioned that I've got this really cool little thing, this uh, Bergeron stick that I have. Um, it says stick, very resistant watch tool. I couldn't resist buying it. That's how resistant it was. 7010 made from Poly, 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 volant, no. <laughs> poly something. It, it'll focus. Polyamide. There we go. So it's polyamide plastic and it's got a flat end on it. That's the sharp end. And the other side is the flat end and it's used for holding springs down and stuff like that there. So this is actually a really good stick. So if you can get yourself one of these, get it. It's, I think it's the last tool I've bought. That I that I need. The other thing is I've got hand tools here, and I won't talk much about here. So I've got this little set of of hand tools for putting hands on, and I'm really not sure whether I need to get another set because there's a set that I can get from China that's got four of the plungers on it, and it's got the metal plunger as well, and it's a little more professional looking than this, but this does the job. So I'm not sure if I need to get spend more money on on a hand tool and if I if the tip isn't flat enough I can also I can file it flat no problem so so that's all I had to say so watch the video watch the rest of the video and you'll see how I fix this problem and I'm not going to say anything at the end of the video I'm just going to shut up so so thanks for uh, subscribing to my channel by the way I really enjoy this um, I enjoy the the comments you guys make um, I've been putting shorts on but I'm just trying to see what YouTube algorithms work for getting the most hits on shorts. So I put a, a, a silly one with a giant boulder somebody left in my driveway, a big snow boulder. And uh, I did go down to the end of my driveway and remove it for that person who said, get off your butt and go remove that boulder. I did remove the boulder. I put some uh, flight sim uh, shorts on there. I got uh, Aero Sim is the program I use and I've got professional throttles and professional everything here for that. And I'll just show you what I got here. I got this is the um, this here is the Warthog uh, throttle, so the A10 Warthog throttle, stiff as crap. Like it's really good. It's exact, actually like the the Warthog. It doesn't. You can't rotate this thing, so it's a real throttle. And I bought this desk clamping system here for that, which which is this whole thing is heavy as hell. So and this clamps onto your desk, and it provides uh, much realism, especially with helicopters, because I've got. Uh, I've got a flight yoke as well, and I've got a throttle pack for the flight yoke that's a little bit different. And I also have the um, the full throttle here. Let me just get this. This is going to be a pain in the butt to put back, by the way, but I'm going to see if I can lean over and show you this too. All right, so this thing weighs about 10 pounds. So that is the A10 uh, throttle. So it's just showing up. It's on the same kind of a clamping system. So this thing is 10 pounds. The throttle is is actually 10 pounds, but I bought it because it's a 
it's the brother of the other one that you use and the reason I bought it is that the throttle here is like butter somebody said this is like butter so it's got all of the same buttons and everything that the A10 has on it so if you want to fly realistically you got to have something like this so that's what it's called the Hotas Warthog so the Warthog throttle so this is a beast it is a friggin beast anyway so I've got a couple of videos on this only because I I kind of respect all the work the engineering that went into designing this thing I'm trying to put it down on the floor here before I crush something right so just put that down right there there we go I'm back so I made a couple of shorts on that because uh, I do like flying I work in aerospace so I got to know your equipment so it's a good way of doing it is to do a lot of simming which I've done from since the mid 80s I think because when I first started simming and working on F-18s in real life and stuff like that so but the watch the watch hobby is my is one of my favorite things to do and I like a challenge so repairing the 7750 was a massive challenge I put a pocket watch video on the other day and that watch is still ticking away like crazy um, I can actually lift it up right now and have a listen because I haven't put the hands on yet I'm gonna dump the hands here we go let me see oh yes and this is a Waltham this was the Waltham I was working on and it is still ticking away like a monster which is the owner who is what's his name Brian <laughs> The owner would be exceptionally happy because this thing here is tip ticking like crazy and it doesn't have there's a plate missing on above the ratchet wheel and I got it like that because I watched the disassembly video and it was missing so there is no plate above that wheel but it's not really necessary to for the watch to function but uh, the thing I had to do on this watch was replace the lower balance jewel setting with a jewel in it that fit perfectly because the other one was too big the jewel setting was too big and the jewel was too big the setting was fine and the jewel looked like uh, what are those m movies with those worms with the teeth Urgh, like that kind of looked like a rat so the the jewel looked like it was completely dissolving and it was going it was on its way to eating the pivot the lower pivot which means I would have had to replace the balance staff likely make a new one because they're hard to get a hold of so solve that problem um, and the video shows how I solved it um, and got some appreciation for that in comments but again if you want me to uh, to do a vlog like a video log like a YouTube live I'll do that and I could likely do it on Sundays but I'll let you know and I'd love to try it out because I obviously talk a lot um, and before I go I get a lot of questions on on the glasses I use to do watch work and I, I apologize for my see-through hand over here because it has to do with the chrono settings when you're doing green screen so so this here set this is an airy loop and I'm telling you this is what you got to get if you're gonna do watch repair this airy loop slaps down like that gives me times five and there's a times five and then there's a times three that are in my glasses on the bottom and the upper part are 1.5 for reading so I can read my computer screen, flip that down, do some very detailed work. So, and that's called an airy loop, A-R-Y, if you want to get an airy loop. So I've shown the box a few times when people have said, what is that loop? It's the airy loop. Stop asking. So again, do you want me to do a vlog? And what do you want me to do, on, do the vlog on? Is it pocket watch? Is it watch stuff? Let me know. Uh, could be anything from polishing to watch cleaning machines to what chemicals I use, to the types of tools you need to get, to the use of screwdrivers, the use of the, the uh, finishing of screwdriver tips, the use of tweezers. I did a video on how to use tweezers properly. Um, anything. Just let me know and let me know if you want me to do this. If you're all saying, yeah, do it, I'll do it. If everyone's saying, nope, shut up, I don't want to hear again from you, I hear again from you. That's a good English. Uh, I told you guys I'm an engineer, not a, I'm not an English guy. So, I think my hat's crooked too. Let's see. There we go. Fix that hat, you moron. So, there we go. Anyway, let me know. Uh, get right back to me right away. I'm going to publish this video later on today. Today is Sunday, and uh, I'm going to recase this watch in a few minutes um, because it's ready. I won't tell you why it's ready, but it's ready. So, thanks a lot. Thanks for subscribing to my video. 
hit like and please share it with others so I can build myself up to 10, 10k of subscribers and get people to send me more Rolexes that I can destroy. <laughs> Just kidding. If you want me to do watch work again, you can reach me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. The pocket watch that you saw me working on, it comes from a gentleman who's from California who said, is there any way you can help me with this watch? He's gone to a jeweler before and the jeweler used a screwdriver to wind it. This is what he told me. I'm like, oh my God. I almost threw up on my breakfast table when I heard that. It was bad. I almost threw up on the 7750 Velger, Velger watch. Sorry, Bill. So Bill tells me I'm the same guy at work as I am doing these videos. Well, he's right. Why be someone different? So um, anyway, so he, he had no hope in getting these repaired because the jeweler said, it's too much work for me. I can't do it because it is a lot of work. Uh, a friend of mine, I've done a few watches for him over the years. His name is Bori. Shout out to Bori. Okay, I hope you're doing better, Bori. Um, I just sent him back two very high-end pocket watches that I that I got one of them going exceptionally well. The other one was hard to get going from a regulation perspective, but it's running very strong. Uh, one of them was in one second a day or something like that with a crazy, crazy amplitude. So that was a lot of work. Had to make jewel settings uh, on a lathe for those watches, and I had to shave down pallet bridges and crap like that so it was a lot of work and what I end up doing is usually repairing someone else's failures and this particular watch that I was working on not this one here I guess because this one had a, a screw loose just like me so this watch had a screw loose and I had to figure out what happened where the screw was there was rust in there and I had to deal with that and then I had to learn how to rebuild it and everything right which was an adventure for me because I'd been years since I'd done a a chronograph but I'm very careful so managed to rebuild it running really well um, just that upper dial I'm just hoping that upper sub dial stays where it needs to stay right so you see this hand has moved around now it means I've been talking for almost 20 minutes holy crap gotta shut up so anyway once again if you want me to do a Sunday uh, video and be the watchmaker that you can go talk to for an hour on Sundays an hour an hour and a half maybe depending on how long you guys want me to chat about tools and technique and everything else then uh, let's do that so I'm JD again welcome to my channel and please subscribe if you haven't done it already and if you want to talk about life in the pursuit of happiness I can talk about that if you want me to talk about 90 horsepower motors with a command thrust a command thrust then I can talk about that too um, and if you want me to talk about how to cheat at cards I can talk about that too Hey, my brother's out there in YouTube land. So we're bringing this tag back in. Look at the bloody finger. What the hell's going on there? It's a lot of scary movies. All right, my brother's out there in new YouTube land. Here's the problem. So as I said before, I did the 7750 Valjour movement. Um, and if you look here, uh, this little uh, sub-dial hand is a minute counter. And when you reset the chronograph, which I'm not going to do right now, I put a little tiny bit of power on it. Um, when you reset the chronograph, this bugger doesn't go straight up. It just ends up here, which means the first time I reset it, it's a slight bit loose. And it just flung over here, and this is kind of where it stays. So I'm going to disassemble this. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to disassemble this watch, and I'm going to reset that chrono hand because it's bugging the crap out of me so so I'd like to thank uh, the viewers out there who watch my videos thanks a lot for subscribing um, it's really appreciated uh, I gotta make sure I get the right thing in here but anyway really appreciated the subscriptions um, uh, it helps my channel along and helps inspire me to make more videos so there you go so I just opened the watch up. I just, uh, you know, take off the, uh, I wonder if I can unscrew this. What do you think? My fingernails? I'll probably break a fingernail. No, I'm not going to try it. Uh, the best way to do it is actually with a ball. One of these dollar store balls. And you just play, apply some pressure on it. I'm going to do it this way here. And then just grab it and turn it. And there we go. And that just undoes it really nicely. So... Just going to take this off because I got to take the movement out to do this. 
And as much as I don't want to do it because the watch is wondering perfectly, I can't have that chrono hand going straight up. So I'm hoping to be able to repair this. And you can see the watch is ticking away there, minding its own business. Um, to take out the back here properly, um, I should be taking the, uh, the rotor off. So what you want to do is remove the rotor. Uh, just hang on a sec. So to remove the rotor very carefully. Uh, position the uh, screwdriver here and I've got my gloves on one hand I gotta take it off because I can't use a screwdriver properly with my glove on and I noticed Mark who also does watch repair work he, he only uses one glove himself so and I ju just should be able to put a little bit of pressure on the screw and wait till it ticks once and I'm gonna put, pick this screw up with Rodico because I don't want it falling into the movement because that will cause me all kinds of other problems. So. I'm already risking stuff here. What the hell did I do? So that, oh there it is, it's on the rotor. Thank you, Jesus! Thank you for not falling inside the watch. Now I can just very carefully lift the rotor up like that and put that aside. And there's the movement there. I've got my uh, very nice movement pad here. Um, I've got to push in the, um, for the little button there for removing the stem and I believe if I recall you should be push, pulling that out all the way into set mode and then removing the stem. So I can push that stem button down with a very small screwdriver here. Let's get in here like this. This is operating here. And the stem should just come right out. There we go. That's the stem. I'll just move that aside for a second. Because now I want to dump the movement. I hate doing this because it's working so nicely. Just make sure there's no dirt or anything on that. And to dump the movement, I just need to put the Bergeron 5395 a gel movement holder on the top. That might bring movement out with the ring. I'm hoping it brings a movement out with the ring. Uh, if it doesn't, then I've got to remove the ring first. Uh, you know what? It's not going to work that way. Because in order to remove that movement, I've actually got to take these two screws out. I told you, this is like an adventure I didn't want to have. But, but I've got to take these two screws out right here. There's one here. Like that. That screwdriver's not wide enough, so I'm going to go up one. Was it black? I'm going to go to red and very carefully unscrew that. And again, like I said before, I really don't want to uh, lose the screw inside the movement. There it is, there. Get some Rodico again and just pluck that out. Might be able to lift that up with my tweezers. But this is scary crap, I'm telling you. Because I've already done the work on this watch and it's in mint. It works so well. Just that one hand is upsetting me. So I just grab that and get it out of the way. And then the other one. Now I did go to my cottage and I cleaned the snow off the roof of my cottage. So there wasn't a lot on there. It was just very, very little. So I was very happy today. Um, Somebody online said I need to talk faster, so do you think I should talk faster? Yeah, let's talk faster from now on. I'll upset everybody that's older. And they will say, why is this guy talking so friggin' fast? So I just want to unscrew this. this. These are the clips that hold the movement in. And when you get up really close with your loop, your eye loop, everything looks like it's big. So it works, and if you've got steady hands, i got pretty steady hands. That uh, and I'll show you the loop here. This is the airy eye loop here, and this eye loop flips out. There's what it looks like here, and it just flips out like that. So the eye loop itself is not cheap. And you just and I've got glasses that are the bottom lens are times threes, and the up top lens is for watching computers. So so there's the um, this is now out. So this should, the whole unit should fall out, right, if I flip this around. Or I can try lifting it out like this. But to do that, I've got to use two tweezers. 
or else it's not going to lift out properly. I'm better off just putting my my movement holder on like that and then just lifting up because I think that'll come right out. There we go. So there's the case and I showed you previously I did a video on the case and and all of that nonsense. So I wish this thing weren't ticking anymore but, it's, but it is. So the problem is with this little this pivot here so I'm not sure if that's on good enough and if I look at it at an angle there's still some space there so could I have pushed it on more I don't know so what I'm gonna do is just lift that up very carefully I should be able to use my micro lifters here and I might put a piece of paper down as well so if I don't deface the face and then I'm gonna push that back on so my option here though is to put a spot, like I'm talking a very solid spot of of um, Loctite on that on that hand, so the next time it snaps over, it doesn't doesn't cause an issue. So so if I can get my piece of paper down, I'll do it. And if I can't, I'll just use my. Uh... Now you see how that's just moving. That's the problem right there. And look at that, I can lift it right up off the watch. That's why it wasn't staying. That's why it would snap back, but really not. So my question was, was this thing supposed to be on the other side? I don't think so. So I think what I need to do though, like I told you, is put the world's smallest spot of Loctite on this, on this, uh, on the hand on the end, if I can do that and then push it back on and the Loctite should hold it in place. Now, now the chronograph hand is off just a bit. Uh, you can you can squeeze these hands a little tighter uh, but I have a feeling if I do that I'm in a whole other world. And you don't want to upset the pivot so I think Loctite would be the best solution here. And I know I've got blue Loctite which is semi-lock. Um, if I grab grab my I'm just gonna come back I'll leave it like this for a second but uh, I've got uh, all my glues are in the same place now because I got a nice setup here maybe I'll show you my setup just to hang on a second all right so briefly uh, what I have here is I got a set of drawers and what I did was I was I cut every second one out here and I leave the thin, left a thin space in here then I bought these drawers from uh, Amazon to fit in and so I've got areas now for that and then I also these drawers are great I keep my gloves up here my black gloves a little hard to grab but these are containers they're really nice it's like an art container or something but but this whole supply drawer I think was for um, was for paper because this this was thin to hold letter uh, size paper but I very meticulously cut out the centers of all of these drawers so I've got uh, you know, if I want to get some some uh, sticks out to clean jewels, uh, if I want to hold some tubes, these are tubes I use to modify my lathe. And I've got all my glues in here. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got the Loctite in here, but yeah, I do. So right in the bottom here is the Loctite. And I'm, t I'm telling you, all, what I'll do is I'll put in, I'll use a needle to apply that to the tip of that, of that uh, hand, and then I'll push that on and I don't want to mess but I want to be able to take it off too because it says it's it's removable Loctite that's what I wanted uh, that's the stuff that I should be able to take that hand off at any time if I needed to but that'll keep it in position because you saw it was just rolling around so um, and I think if I try to squeeze that hand on more because you can compress the hand just like you're compressing a cannon pinion I'll probably F that up so I don't want to do that uh, in here I'm able to store um, you know, all kinds of crap here so and over here are parts drawers and behind here are screws and up here is where I keep movements that I'm working on here and sometimes I have some tools everything's ready access books up there all that sort of thing so this is one of my areas uh, that's pretty close to uh, where I need to work and so I'm just sitting sitting down right now in a chair and and working away so I'll, let's just see if I can do the Loctite thing on this 
I've got a needle here on the end of a pin vise, and I'm just going to clean that off the very tip of it with a piece of uh, watch paper. And I had already filed this needle down to be extremely sharp, right? So if you look at the end there, so it's kind of pointed. Uh, it's a little bit of an angle right now, but it doesn't matter because I'm just trying to get some Loctite on there. Um, I'll likely just, I'll just take this watch paper and maybe put a drop on there. And then I'll put a drop on the tip of the hand and then I'll push the hand back on. Um, the hand looks like it's pretty flat, so when I push the hand on I can use I can use this one here or I can use the flat one to push it straight down. So either or. Uh, but I know you saw how loose this thing was, so it's not going to tighten up on its own over that pivot. Now the question is were the other ones the other ones seem to be on fairly good. They seem to be uh, but I definitely don't want to push too hard on that because you could break the pivot. So I'd rather put the Loctite on. Try that for now. And if that doesn't work, then we got other problems. So that's blue, removable, which is good, but it'll solidify. I wonder if I have the semi. Let me check and see if I've got the semi removable. Actually, I've got the uh, thread lock removable. Um, it's actually medium strength, so it's not high tensile strength. So if I needed to take that off in the future I could likely do it because um, it's medium strength so so I think I'll use that instead of the removable because the removable may not lock in good enough for this particular hand and I really need it to, to be locked in well so and I need to be able to take again take the world's smallest piece of Loctite and put it on the end of this needle and then take the needle and just put it in the very end of this right so very carefully which is it's all very, it's like surgery. So it's bad surgery. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some on this paper. And there it is. It's probably too absorbent, this paper, so I should probably put it on a piece of plastic. And now, the tricky part. So if I use the needle, the question is, is the needle going to pick up enough of this stuff? I know from working with oilers, you, you dip it in and then you pull it out. Uh, there's a bit too much on there. So you dip it in, then you pull it out, and I'm looking at it, and I can see that there's, looks like there's nothing staying. Let me see if I can, if it ends up anything on the end here. Nope, that's not enough. I may use my oiler here to do this. Use a fine oiler. Even the fine oiler might be too too fat to do this. So I put it in the oiler and I pull it out. I do get more on the end with the oiler. And then I can put that on. That stays pretty... Alright, so I did get some on the very tip of that. Now I need to grab it and turn it around. I think I'm a little shaky from today. I'm going to look at this in the mat again. Do I have any in there? Yeah, I do. It looks like I have some in there. So what I want to do now is line the, the pipe up with this, with the end here. I usually lay the pipe down and then I push it on over. I may need two sets of tweezers for this job. Where are my other tweezers when I need them? All right. All right, it's down, and now I'm going to just push this down. Be very careful. I 
as I push it down, I have to align the hands because it tends to just drift around when you're doing that. All right, so I push that down. Now, i got to push it down a bit more, so I'm going to hold on to the movement as I do this. That's it. So now that's done. And I don't want to, to play with that anymore. I'm going to sweep my rotico over it just a tad though. And yeah, I think I want to put, just rub my rotico on it just a bit because it looks like it's, it's got a little bit of, uh, it's not as clean as it was. So just smush my rotico and then move that over. I'm really hoping this works. So shout out to Bill. So I'm a cool, cool. I'm a keener because I needed to have this fixed, and I was pissed off that it wasn't. So, so we're just hoping and praying that this thing is going to be aligned properly. So now I've got, I've got it like that. So I should be able to, um, should be able to put the movement back in. Um, you know what, I may let that dry uh, for a little while before I put this back, case it again. I'm not sure. I think I'll let it dry for for about 10, 10 or 20 minutes before I case it because the uh, casing it might cause a problem. So I can cover this up so no dust gets on it and then I'll case it after. There we go. Put a cover on that and that prevents any dust from getting on there. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's get back at this now. So I've left this for quite some time. So I've got to case it again. So to case this, I'm going to turn this around and get the chrono hands to, uh, or the, uh, the chrono to line up. So I can just plop it down and it should basically find itself in the case. Let's see if I can get away with just plopping this down. Is it going to work or not? Sometimes you got to do the uh, the watch movement first, and then and then you do the uh, come on baby, do the watch movement first, and then come on get in there, get in there. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I may just turn this around and see if that works. So I know this thing wants to fall in. So there we go. All right, now I can see this thing is standing up like a soldier. So I've got to align this. This is the um, the ring, the separating ring here, and that just fell in nicely. So that's that's in there now. Um, and now I've got to put those little latches or hooks or whatever you want to call them back into position here. This is not easy. So I'm going to do this under duress. So. I may turn the light on on my camera. I got a really nice uh, camera here that it has an LED lighting included in it. So this is going to be a lot longer a video than I thought it was going to be. So let me just drop this down first. And what happens with this? I believe I can fly. These go right on top of like that. Now I don't want these to go anywhere. And I know the watch, I put like the world's smallest wind on this watch, right? So I don't think that the wind will hold, um, but I don't care. Because I, I wanted to put a very small, a very light wind on it as I was working with that chronograph hand. So now i got to put this screw in, and hopefully the coffee I had uh, earlier won't affect me. What do you think? So you pick the screw up. And with the same hand, you turn that screw around like that. And then I should be able to very carefully put that in the hole. Like so. Like that. And then I'm going to get out my screwdriver. In this case, I'm using my red one. So I'm using the red screwdriver. And I'm going to lean into this thing because it's going to be tough 
to uh, work on here. I'm going to lean into it to screw this down. I know if I put too much pressure on that screw, it's going to act up. So, so I'm not going to completely tighten that until I put the stem back in because it may want to find home some, somehow else, right? Some other way. I'm going to use the right tweezers here. And instead of moving myself around, I'm going to move the, the watch around very carefully. You know, while I'm sitting here, I better not get a cramp. <laughs> it's uh, not a good thing. All right, so that's not going to go in nicely if, unless I do this. There we go, like that, and then grab that screw. And as I put the screw in, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to go over the movement as I'm doing this because if I go over the movement and for some reason I drop the screw and it goes in there there's a probability of having to take this watch apart to get that screw so you want to come from the outside of the watch and then in uh, that's the safest way of getting it in there and I want to make sure that screw is in my tweezers correctly right so it wasn't so I got to turn that around now and and make sure I grab the screw uh, correctly and then I'm able to turn that around. So I'm having fun. The other one was a lot easier. Then. There we go. And I've got a good mat. Some people were asking me, what, where, where did I get my mat? Well, you get a roll of this from the dollar store. And all it is is a dish mat. Um, but it's soft, which is nice. I can see the... Uh, I can see the balance slowing down, which is great. Because I tell you, I put like a quarter of a wind on this watch and just worked for the last hour. There we go. When I put these in, I try to hold my breath for one second. It's kind of like if you were in the army shooting guns. Uh, what would happen is that you'd, you'd take a breath, you'd breathe out. <clears throat> and then you'd breathe, and then you'd breathe in again. So you'd breathe out, and then you'd hold it, and then you'd shoot. That's how you, you shoot accurately. So you got a bloody cuticle. It looks worse on camera, by the way, than it does in person. So, so now I'm going to put the winding stem in very carefully. This is already oiled and everything, so there's no need to do more on this. And so, I, but I do have to find home with this thing. And I could push it in, but I'm going to use my, I'm going to use a needle to push down on the button here, and then push the stem in. There we go. I think that's in all the way. Let me see if I pull that out. That's what happens? Yeah, that's good. That's in, and now I'm going to go over and tighten the case down. So I've got these two screws that I get to tighten, and then after I do that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to give them a really good tightening because uh, I don't want them going anywhere. And do that properly. You back it off again, and then you tighten it again, right? And now I'm going to wind this just a little tiny bit to make sure that the wind actually goes into the watch. So So it's not winding right now for some reason. Let me just pull that out. There we go. All right, you see that moving? So I apologize for my stupid cuticle here, but unless it grosses you out. So just watch this wheel right here. And that's putting, uh, that's, that's the, the upper winding wheel. And if you do this, as you can see, you can even hear it. And you can see that, uh, that uh, bounce going like crazy. 
right? So now that's winding perfectly. So, so now all I need to do is put the rotor back on. I'll make sure these are tight again. So go back in and do a tighty whitey. Lefty turny, righty tighty, or whatever the heck you want to call it. Nope, don't do that. Alright, that's good there. And then I want to put the, uh, the, bow, uh, the rotor back in here very carefully. So it's not too hard to put a rotor back in. So it just floated in like that. And then the screw. And once again, I don't want to travel where this could cause me a problem. So I'm going to travel from the end here. Just drop that down the middle. Like so. And then <clears throat> grab my uh, screwdriver. In this case here, I'm going to use the, uh, let's call that silver or beige or whatever you want to call that screwdriver. It's a bit bigger than the other one was. And I could take I could get my stick stick out but I'll use this one instead okay this is this should hold this down while I screw this in all right so that's screwed in nice and tight just use the stick here to turn that around when I do this, I watch the gears here to make to see if there's any turning because you can see this, the gears turn ever so slightly as you turn it around. I look the gear on this side here turning, so so that turned nicely, and now I put the case top back on, and I'm just hoping this works, but I'm not going to test it until tomorrow because I'm not going to let that stuff that uh, Loctite uh, medium strength. Uh, I want that to to really settle in so I can't possibly screw that up. So I'm going to take the ball here, I'm going to back this off so you can see what I'm doing. Back the camera off a bit and then take the ball and actually tighten this. Just ball tight I'll call it. There you go. Now the only problem with this watch that right now is that screw down crown doesn't screw down. So and that don't think there's a way I can fix that. I'd have to replace the crown or replace the the pipe or something but it's a lot of, a lot of work and I'm sure Bill will say don't worry about it right it's likely what he's gonna say I just got to tell him don't go swimming because the water should will get in and I'm not sure if I can screw this down just not sure I don't think it will screw down I tried earlier but with no success I don't think the threads exist anymore on the screw down crown so there we go that's that's it that's done done and dusted um, I'm not as you can see the uh, that chrono hand is straight up and down right now and I'll test that later because if I test it now and not and not tomorrow I don't know if the uh, if that uh, Loctite's dry enough so in the meantime I'll cut my thumb some more okay so he gets uh, lots of good blood in there I'm telling you the blood looks way worse on camera than it does in person it looks like nothing in person you put it on the camera and you're like oh my god go to the hospital there we go that's it um, now all I need to do is put the pin back on this thing and she's ready to rock and roll and I'll this thing will run all night uh, can I tuck the pin in with my thumb now can I do it can I do it probably not no what I'll end up doing is breaking my thumbnail right tool for the right job folks don't use the wrong tool for the right job so I got some work to do this week. I gotta find myself a bolt. So this has got to be the easiest job to put this in, right? So, but I'm trying to make it the hardest job. All kinds of technique in doing this. This is the easiest watchmaking job is to put these pins back in. But I'm causing all kinds of issues. Personal traumatic pin replacement issues, right? Trying to put this in using the back end of my, there we go. So that should slide in like that. And now I just have to move this over. That's good on one side and it's good on the other side. There we go, done. There we go, done. Bill, I did it. And we'll see if this hand on the top holds its position. If it doesn't, damn it, damn it, Jim. I'm gonna take this apart again and fix it again if I have to. So there it is. 
nicely restored tag watch ticking away like crazy like crazy Jerry and this here if I hit this the uh, second hand will move around and I, I'll stop this at the top but I'm not hitting reset folks I refuse to hit reset because reset will likely do stuff so but I can let this run and let the other hand kind of move right because if I think if I let it run for a minute it ticks over let's just watch this I know you can speed up my video so someone online said look you talk way too slow so I run your videos at one at 1.5 times and then you sound normal I thought that was pretty friggin funny um, so good for you buddy uh, I think you should run it at six times and get the video over with in two minutes so I'm not sure whether this will flip over to the next time look at that now Look at that, Bill. It just moved to the next position, exactly lined up with that one minute marker. I'm going to go one more time and then let it go around and line up again with the next marker. But you know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to run that chrono all night. And then in the morning, I'm waking up and seeing where it, where it is. And like I said before, if you stop the chrono, stop it when it's at 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock position, that chrono hand. The little second hand that's going around right now, stop it at either of those positions before you hit reset. Because if you don't, then the thing will fling around like violently and you may, the second hand might drop off, uh, which is not good. So that's my recommendation. Uh, so let's check that. I'm going to let it tick one more time and I'm going to end the video before you guys write all kinds of notes about me talking too much. Here we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. And oh my god, look at that thing move. I'm sending this to Bill so he can look at it and go, Oh, well, how'd you do that? How did you do that? Anyway, I should set the date on this thing too, because eh? the date is not set. The date is in I am not set mode. So, is it in winding mode still? I'm not sure. That's in. Look at it once. And then you move this, I think, to set the date. How does the date get set on this thing? I'm not sure. There, why not? At once. Something's not clicking right here. I don't like this. Maybe you can't do it when the chrono is running. What do you think? I'm not going to play with it now because everything should be fine. You may have to stop the chrono to set the date. I never, uh, never looked that one up. Somebody can tell me whether you need to do that. But look at that, how sweet that is. Eh? So there we go. It's working. You know, can't set the time on it or the date because I think the chrono hand's running and you can't do that while the chrono hand's running. That's a little note to file. So I'm just getting rid of a little polish on the side here that I put on it. Anyway, right, thanks for watching my video. I'm going to publish this right now and you can give me your comments. And again, do you want me to do uh, video logs on Sundays? You can ask me any damn question you want. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.